Welcome to our video tutorial involving manipulating trig expressions using trig identities. In each of the three problems we're going to consider, we want to look at how we could manipulate the expression in order to have something that we could graph, or in some situations, if there was a full equation, a way to solve the equation. Look at the identity or look at the expression pictured on the screen. When we're contemplating these types of things, we want to find out which of our trig identities, likely a sum and difference or a double angle identity, would be most helpful in approaching the problem we're presented. Now notice on this item we have the sines group together and we have the cosines group together. So with the sines group together and the cosines group together, if we look at our identities, that's going to be the cosine of a sum or difference. So applying that identity, we need to have the cosine term first with a positive attached to it. So we'll factor out a negative 10 here and we'll write the cosine term first. Now notice the other thing that I'm doing is I'm going to write the angles in the same order each time. So when I factor out a negative 10, we're going to get a negative sign in front of the sign. And just for consistency purposes, I'm writing the 7x first and the 2x second. Now, if we look at this expression that we're highlighting in magenta, that is the cosine of a sum or difference. And when we apply our identity to it, that would be the cosine of 7x plus 2x. Now, why is that 7x plus 2x? Well, remember with cosine, it's the opposite sign that appears inside of the expression. So ultimately this would be negative 10 times the cosine of 9x. If we were graphing this expression, that's a pretty straightforward expression to graph. If it was equal to y, we would solve it from there. If we were solving something, let's say we had negative 10 cosine of 9x is equal to 0 or something else, we would solve it from there. But the big idea is understanding how to use the trig identities to make an expression nicer. Typically, it's going to be this list of identities, as we said, the sum and difference identities or the double angle identities. Let's scroll into our second example. Now, this one looks a little bit more sophisticated, but it's still going to rely on those same identities we were looking at. And the first item that we hopefully notice that's going to be key is we've got a sine times a cosine. Now let's rewrite this just a little bit. Notice it's a squared there. So I'm going to put something squared. And that's going to be the sine of 3x and the cosine of 3x all being squared. Now here's the key thing. We want to have a 2 here because the key identity that we're looking at has, for the double angle of a sine, it has 2 times the sine of something times the cosine of something. So if that's going to be a 2, keep in mind 2 squared is really 4, and we had a 24 out front, which means that this is going to turn into a 6. So when we rewrite this whole expression we were given, here's what we have. Now if we adapt our identity, this is going to be 6 times we replace what's inside parentheses with just the sine of double the angle. So this is going to turn out to be the sine of 6x. That quantity is squared minus 6 cosine squared of 6x. Notice then we have 6 sine squared of 6x minus 6 cosine squared of 6x. But now we're going to look back at our identities and this particular problem is going to have us implement two identities. Now if we look at the double angle for cosine, we can manipulate the expression we have into something that fits that bill. We'll factor out a negative 6 and we'll write the cosine term first here's what we get. 
And based on our identity, if we have cosine squared something minus sine squared of that same something, it turns out to be cosine of double that something. So this is going to be a negative 6 times the cosine of 12x. And similar to our first problem, at this stage of the game, if we were graphing it, and if we had that this was equal to y, that's not a bad graph to render. Or if we were solving this and we had that that expression was equal to something else, we could solve it rather straightforward from this point onward. So it comes down again to using likely the sum and difference or double angle identities to manipulate a trig expression into something that's much simpler to work with. One more example that we're going to look at. And here it is. 10 sine squared of x. Well, that is an interesting expression, but it's one that hopefully isn't too bad for us to contemplate. So if we go back to our identity list, here's going to be the one that's key to working with this particular expression. The cosine of 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So in this case, I'm just going to write that out. The cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. Now we're trying to get sine squared by itself initially. So I'll bring sine squared over to the left and we'll bring the cosine of 2x over to the right. Notice, remember, if your input has more than one thing there, like a couple things multiplied together, you need the parentheses. If it's just a single variable or number, it doesn't absolutely need to have the parentheses, although a lot of times I will write parentheses. Now we're trying for 10 sine squared of x. This is a quick fix. If we just multiply both sides by 5, keep in mind you're just always trying to manipulate the expression you have. We'll get what we want. So this is 10 sine squared of x would be equal to 5 minus 5 times the cosine of 2x. And if we were graphing it, that's an easier expression to graph. Set it equal to y, go from there. If this was solving an equation, this could likely be an easier form to solve the equation with as well. So overall, when you're working with these identities, keep an eye on the sum and difference and the double angle identities. Watch for the expression you have and see what might be the nicest way to clean it up.